So I want to get into this video, um, tell you a little bit about the history of where Evolve AI came from, and that includes the history of Skynet coaching, as well as what are benchmark sets and, and why should we care about them? <laughs> Garrett Blevins here with an update uh, and explanation of what is Evolve AI and also what are benchmark sets. Uh, that's our flagship feature that we've added to the product most recently uh, in my work with Mike Tashir, uh, legendary godfather of RPE training. So first, uh, Evolve AI is not a program, as it may surprise you. Instead, it's a process. It's a process that's based in principles. And what the difference between that is, is you're all very familiar with powerlifting programs, um, whether it's an ebook or whether it's a standard program that's been around for a long period of time. These are really static. They don't grow and, and they're in a single style. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Many great coaches have put out their own training manuals, methods. And while these are great, I started thinking, if we're talking about AI, really we shouldn't be linking ourselves to a single coaching style or a single way of doing things. Instead, if we're talking about artificial intelligence, we should be leveraging everything that's available to us in that field of technology. And that means we should be feeding principles into the inference engine. The inference engine is really the rules-based engine where all the decision-making processes and the expert knowledge is going that is acting on a data set. And a data set is, think of it like every possible combination of exercises, sets, reps, intensities, uh, the ways that workouts are con uh, consumed, the types of frequencies you might have, upper lower splits, SPD days, uh, myo reps, supersets, top sets with drop sets, any of that sort of information. Uh, you would have every possible option you could think of in your data set. And the inference engine is going to engage with the customer's information just like a coach would, to select the right pieces of training information. What I want to do and what Evolve AI is, the project itself, is to take and gather as many different coaching styles and the expertise of the scientific community and the actual testing and, and lived experience of world-class athletes and to put all of that into the inference engine while at the same time providing a user interface for you that's streamlined and easy to use so that you can access all the decisions that are happening in that expert coaching at a price that you can actually afford. I mean, imagine if you tried to hire, you know, researchers, top coaches, and athlete advisors all to guide you in your training. I mean, it'd be hundreds and hundreds of dollars per month, maybe even thousands. Um, and also there's a there's a demand issue there. They don't have enough time. There's not enough great coaches out there to supply that to all the people that want it. There is a shortage of coaching in my opinion. And so Evolve AI is a project. It's trying to really democratize and disseminate that information to anybody and everybody. Um, that's why we price it as low as we can. We want people to have choice and to make the choice to have that choice. I started when I was working as an online coach and doing the same repetitive tasks over and over again with my coaching methods and my own, my own style and making programs for people. And I started automating those processes as I went through. And at some point I hit a critical mass where I realized, wow, everything in the coaching process can be automated. And I set to work making an expert system that just had my methods in it. And that was the original, uh, it was blessed coaching back then. And I expanded and uh, began working with Brandon Campbell and Ben Rice until we finally got to where we are today. Now I realize provide a single solution which I believe to be the future of coaching and the future of sports science. And I mean, the future of powerlifting, but the future of bodybuilding, the future of anything that's going to have a barbell and lifting uh, involved with it. And so that's the history of where this has come from. And that's what Evolve AI is all about. So with that said, let's talk about benchmarks. So just what is a benchmark set? A benchmark set is just what it sounds like. It gives you a benchmark for what your performance is on that given day. So you're going to have an exercise, and if you select a benchmark set for it, it might be a single at eight, a triple at nine, a set of five at eight, something like that that's going to allow you to get a fairly accurate estimated one rep max. That estimated one rep max is going to let you know approximately like what your performance is for that day, and it can be utilized by the system to dictate your back offsets. It can be used for a number of other things as well, uh, determining time to peak, uh, seeing kind of the trend of what your benchmarks have been doing. And it can also be useful in seeing the combination of exercises and SRA curves within a given week of how other exercises that you're doing are impacting your current training. 
You don't want to overuse benchmarks because they are, you know, an impactful training fatigue stimulus. So you can get burned out on doing singles at eight all the time. Um, and there can, they can add some training monotony if they're included in every exercise all the time. But they're very valuable because they can really dial in that day, help you get the right weight on the bar, and they can themselves be a valuable training stimulus if you need higher intensities to really progress at an optimal rate. Some people do very well with submaximal work, really almost all the time. Um, I've made systems before that have been very submaximal, much higher in volume. And what that means is overall, the sets are fairly low RPE, it, you know, a lot of five and six RPE sets, even the top sets being fairly low, but that there's a lot of volume for that day. The question that I had and didn't know how to solve was, if I decide, you know, let's say I have, for example, as you see here, seven sets of 10. If I have seven sets of 10, a top set, which is about RPE six, and then back off sets, which are, you know, starting in that, you know, maybe sub six range of RPE, but as you do six of <laughs> six sets of 10, your RPE is going to probably increase, especially if you're using timed rest periods. And what I wondered was, is there a way to quantify the stress of every set such that if I add a higher intensity set, I know how many back off sets to take away. Because obviously you can't compare, you know, a triple at nine to a sub six set back off set of 10. They're just not the same stimulus. And so I needed to find a way to pull that together. Well, I reached out to Mike Tashir because I knew that if there was anybody who would know the answer to that sort of a question, it would be him. And as it turns out, that's an integral part of what he has been developing called emerging strategies. Now, strategies like a process is a way of addressing a problem that's not monolithic. It's not just done one way. Emerging strategy is a whole philosophical stance uh, to training. It was very similar to my own. And as Mike and I continued talking and he was uh, consulting with me on how to solve this kind of thorny question of how to add in these benchmark sets. And I realized Mike Tashir had already solved this problem. And so as we started working together, we began to train the inference engine on how to quantify the stress of each particular set in any given workout, whether it's a top set with drop sets, whether it's straight sets. And if we were to apply a benchmark and put that into the workout, how it would adjust the volume for that day, correlating the stress of the day, keeping the total stress equal, but altering the volume up or down, usually down, as we increase most of the time the intensity of that day's work. So imagine on, uh, if we have this day, uh, uh, seven sets of 10 hypertrophy day, all very submaximal work, but it's a lot of reps. It's 70 reps and there's a lot of metabolic stress going on there. Uh, what does metabolic feel like? It feels like you're going to puke is what it feels like. And oftentimes powerlifters don't enjoy that type of training. And for some people, it's actually not effective. Um, just because it's hard doesn't mean that it's going to be effective. And so what if we added a triple at eight and then follow that up with a secondary benchmark, a set of five at nine? What would that do to the amount of sets that we need to do? Well, as it turns out, it takes a lot of them away because the amount of stress to your body from doing a triple at eight as compared to a top set of 10 at six, and then a set of five at nine, which is very high stress um, as far as it goes, compared to a, you know, a sub six set of 10, they actually take a lot of volume away. And this makes a much more palatable workout. When you look at these two workouts, it doesn't immediately appear that they would be equally stressful to your body, but that's where you have to pay attention to how much total stress there is, which is the combination of metabolic or peripheral stress. Think of, you know, doing sets of 10 and sucking air and, and that sort of stress and central stress. Think of that, you know, this, the people talk about the, you know, the CNS fatigue or the central nervous system fatigue of really heavy weights in that. So, these different types of stress, they, they both impact recovery. They both have stimulus recovery adaptation, SRA curves, but how do we quantify those? And because Mike had a system for quantifying that, I was able to train the inference system with new rules that could pull different data set pieces of information to make workouts different, more palatable to some, but also more effective because we can control very tightly the way in which we're consuming intensity in any workout. Now, the presets for the system, we decided we wanted to really just apply them to the competition lifts by default, but you can apply a benchmark set to any squat bench or deadlift movement that you desire, and you can do it uh, and set it so that every hypertrophy or every strength block that you're using, it's using a certain progression. You can even use AMRAPs if you like. Uh, one of the original AI systems that I made, the first one actually, utilized submaximal back off AMRAPs as a way of dictating how much intensity to change week to week. And so I've been happy to bring back in AMRAPs because some people found great results 
but you also have to be careful. AMRAPs can be overused. And that's why I'm so happy that the system is automatically going to adjust the amount of volume that you're doing in the back offsets, kind of the, the original intent of the classic submaximal periodization to make sure that you're not overtraining. But let's dive a little bit deeper and look at the exact stress of these two workouts and how they compare. You'll notice for the classical submaximal periodization that I've put into my applications before, that the total stress of the day was 2.9 for this seven sets of 10, the top set being 62 to 66%, and then about an eight to 10% drop off of that, depending on a number of factors. That comes out to a 2.9% stress index for the total stress, but a 4.4 stress for metabolic and a 1.4 for central. Well, that 4.4 metabolic to 1.4 central, that three to one ratio, that's what makes this workout seem so daunting to powerlifters. Powerlifters usually like to train in more of a two to one or one to one ratio of metabolic stress to central stress. That's because the weights are gonna be heavier, the volume is gonna be lower, and very often the reps are also a little bit lower as well, bringing that metabolic stress down. Metabolic stress is directly correlated to the number of reps you're doing. So the more reps you're doing, uh, you know, if you're doing sets of eight, sets of 10, even at the same RPE, you're gonna have more metabolic stress from that because there's more reps involved. Conversely, if you're doing sets of five, sets of three singles, um, that's gonna have higher central stress because the absolute weight on the bar is higher given the same RPE, but the metabolic stress is lower. The average of those two together is what we call total stress. And so when we look at this workout, it has a stress total stress index of 2.9, but what does that number mean? What is 2.9 what? what? What is a stress index? The way Mike Tashir has worked it out is that's approximately 2.9 sets of about an RPE nine for a set of, you know, three to five reps. It's about what that feels like. And so oddly to some of you, and, and even to me, as I looked at the math, but started thinking about, wow, how, how am I able to do these seven sets of 10? It's a daunting workout, but I've actually done it. And it wasn't as terrible as I thought it would be. It's, it's kind of a meme these days when people talk about it, but uh, people do it and they do get stronger. How are they able to do this? And it's because the stress is actually relatively low because most of the sets are RPE six or RPE five. And that's very common for submaximal. Again, this classic periodization submaximal training that I've used in my applications before. But when we increase the intensity by adding in benchmarks, we lower the metabolic stress, we increase the central stress, but we maintain that total stress. To try to put this in a little bit simpler terms, our resident sports scientist, Dr. Jacob Gooden, has tried to make a equation. Uh, he calls this the constrained training stress hypothesis. And we can call that the, the CTSH for short. With the CTSH, basically what it says is if you take total stress and you maintain that the same in a given workout, and if you are trying to lower metabolic stress, then central stress must increase. And if you are decreasing central stress, metabolic stress has to increase to keep the total stress the same. This is because metabolic stress can be seen as reps times RPE times the metabolic coefficient of those. Similarly, central is reps times RPE times the central coefficient but the metabolic coefficient is going to increase with the number of reps that you do, whereas the central coefficient is going to decrease with the number of reps that you do. And that's because no matter how good you are at reps, your 10 rep max is always going to be, in terms of absolute weight, less than your single. You're not gonna have the same. And central stress is directly tied to how heavy what it is that you're using is. Um, also impactful is RPE, but both metabolic stress and central stress are going to increase if you're increasing your RPE. So they're directly correlated. Both of them are directly correlated to RPE. The higher your RPE, the higher your stress. Pretty obvious, right? But what's not always obvious is that for most of, uh, almost all the time, central stress is going to be inversely related to reps. The more reps you do, the lower the central stress is. And metabolic stress is going to be higher the more reps that you do. So in some ways, it's kind of like when you're consuming this stress, you can think of it like a pill that you take that takes your body out of homeostasis, it disrupts it, and then your body is going to adapt. And so the next time it receives that stimulus, it is going to handle it better. You might think of it like, you know, pick your poison and you're taking small do doses of it so that you can, you know, acclimate to that training stimulus. And so when we think about this 2.9 stress, we let them choose how they consume the stress of the workout so that it is in some ways more palatable to them. 
And so when I think about changing it over to a triple at eight, a set of five at nine, and then doing two back off sets of 10, well, that's not so bad. But even better than that, what if I lower my rep preference? That's another one of the choices that Evolve AI lets you make. And what this means is for any given exercise, maybe you just don't respond well, that would be the, the right reason to do it, but maybe you don't like doing it either at high rep ranges. And so without changing the whole flow of the program, it's not as though you're always going to do low reps, but from within the range of that block, if it's hypertrophy or if it's strength, relatively, you're going to lower your reps for that exercise. And so instead of doing tens, maybe you're going to do eights, or even if you go all the way to low rep sixes, if you lower the reps, which is going to increase that absolute intensity, it's going to further increase the amount of central stress that you have just by changing the rep preference. But again, we can hold that total stress constant and get a new number of sets. So let's imagine we tried to make this the most palatable that we could. We lower the rep preference from high to low, changing the reps from 10 to six on the back off sets and the intent of the day being not tens, but sixes. Still focuses hypertrophy, but we've lowered the amount of reps. We're adding in benchmark sets that have a much higher RPE than the original protocol and its top set. And so we're shifting everything we can to increase that central stress. While that drops metabolic stress down, we keep total stress constant. And we end up with a much more palatable workout, as you can see here, uh, two, two benchmark sets and two back off sets of six. Well, what's the actual numbers on those? When we look for the actual numbers, the triple at eight, the five at nine, and the two sets of six at what came out to 62.5%. It gives us this exact same. Sometimes you have to, you know, it might be pretty close, but this is exactly the same total stress, 2.9 total stress. But the metabolic stress has dropped from 4.4 all the way down to 3.1. And the central stress has gone from 1.4 all the way up to 2.5. This is moving very close to a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio. And that is going to be much more palatable for any power lifter out there. But note that we're still accomplishing the same goal. And although we have changed away from strictly looking at MEV and MRV as a number of sets, we've made a paradigmatic shift because everything is being compared equally in terms of that total stress metric. And the total stress is coming from the proportion of metabolic and central. So start thinking about how you can organize training when what you're really pulling the levers on, the inference engine that's been trained, the levers that are being pulled are not just sets, but rather the training stimulus that you're receiving and the consequent adaptations, the physical adaptations, which result. And we have some other plans on how to just rethink and, and reconceptualize the whole macro cycle process and really follow the trail of athlete responses. We do investigatory blocks and we learn exactly which pieces to pull from that data set at what time periods to peak a person optimally. And so we're very excited to bring that to you. But the first step in that process was teaching the inference engine about benchmark sets, about how to implement a stress index methodology and to alter volume based on that rather than simply based upon um, an amount of sets that we're trying to do in this sort of a block. So we're very excited to, to announce this new feature, uh, to talk about this, this new process that we're engaged in, this principle-based program that's going to be bigger than any one person, any one coach, any one system. And wow, it's really an exciting time. I'm so happy to be a part of this project, to work with such great people like Dr. Jacob Gooden, Mike Tashir, Kristen Dunsmore, John Hack, Andy Hong. And we're just so excited to bring this product to you. And we are we can't wait to see what the future holds for coaching and for your own training. I hope wherever you're at, you're doing well. Blessings. Inspiration brings us closer to greatness. It provides us with the strength we need to evolve. Evolve AI is built for one thing, your evolution. Our AI-powered app customizes and adjusts your workout based on fitness level, fatigue, and feedback so you can optimize your training and generate results faster. Our innovative training system is backed by research, designed by industry-leading coaches, tested by world-class athletes, and supercharged by artificial intelligence. Greatness lives inside all of us, no matter who we are or where we come from. All it takes is the inspiration to find it. Unlock your potential. Evolve AI.